Hello everyone. <coughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to discuss on the topic quantization noise and signal to noise ratio of a PCM system. We know that quantization noise is produced in the transmitter end of the PCM system by rounding off the sample values of an analog baseband signal to the nearest representation or reconstruction or to the nearest representation or reconstruction or quantization level of the quantizer. To derive an expression for the signal to noise ratio of the PCM system, let us start by considering a memoryless quantizer that is both uniform and symmetric in nature. Let the number of representation levels let, let the number of representation levels of the quantizer be denoted by capital L. Let small x denote the quantizer input and y denote the quantizer output. These two variables that is the input of the quantizer and the output of the quantizer are related by the transfer characteristics of the quantizer given by equation 1 that is y equals to q of x where q represents the quantization function that creates a staircase approximation. The staircase approximation differs depending upon whether the quantizer is a mid riser quantizer or mid-thread quantizer. Suppose that the input x, suppose that the quantizer input x lies inside the interval ik where ik is defined by xk and x of k plus 1 which is represented in the diagram one shown here. Please note the x variables represent the decision thresholds of the quantizer and the y variables represent the representation or reconstruction levels of the quantizer. Currently, we are assuming that the input of the quantizer has an amplitude x that lies inside the interval ik. So, the value of the output for this corresponding value of x upon quantization is supposed to be represented by yk. This is what we have given here. So, so the quantizer output y takes on a discrete value given by y is equals to yk if and only if the value if the x lies inside if x lies inside the interval ik that is if x lies inside this interval then the value of the quantizer output is represented by yk that is what we are going to say here that is what we are going to mean here that is what we are going to represent here Further, let Q denote the quantization error that is produced because of the quantization process and as we already have and as we already know the value of the quantization error ranges between minus delta by 2 and plus delta by 2 where delta itself represents the step size of the quantizer. Please note we have considered an uniform quantizer so the value of delta is uniform and constant so the value of the step size delta is constant. Now since the input of the quantizer is x and the quantization error is represented by q, the quantizer output then is going to be represented as yk equals to input x plus the quantization error q. Once again, once again if, once again this rule is applicable if x lies inside the interval ik. This you should note equation 4 is absolutely valid because the moment you perform quantization depending upon the difference between the decision level and the representation level an error will be created that is what we are representing by small q here. Further let us assume that the quantizer input x is a sample value of some random variable capital X of zero mean and variance sigma x square. Now, when the quantization is fine enough, that is, if the number of representation levels of the quantizer is greater than 64, then the distortion produced by the quantization noise affects the performance of the PCM system as though it were an additive independent noise source of zero mean and mean square value determined by the quantizer step size. The reason for this is that the power spectral density of the quantization noise in the receiver output is practically independent of that of the baseband signal. This we already have proven in the 
This we already have proven in the bank of correlators. This we already have proven in the topic response of bank of correlators to noisy input. Further, for a baseband signal of root mean square value that is large compared to the step size, the power spectral density of the quantization noise has a large bandwidth compared with the signal bandwidth. So, the quantization noise uniformly dis so the quantization noise is uniformly distributed throughout the signal band and its interfering effect on the signal is similar to that of the thermal noise. Now having stated this, let us now move on and represent the quantization error. Let the random let the random variable capital Q denote the quantization error and let small q which we already have previously considered denote its sample value. Now since that we stated the quantization error is now since we stated the quantization error is uniformly distributed then the probability density function then the probability density function of the quantization error can be given by the equation 5 here which is f q of q which represents the probability density function of the quantization error is equal to 1 divided by delta if and only if the delta is equal to 1 by delta over the interval minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2 and 0 otherwise. Now the value 1 by delta is at, now the value 1 by delta is correct because we have assumed the quantization error to be now we say the probability density function now we say the probability density function has a value of 1 by delta over the interval minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2 mainly because we have assumed the quantization error to be uniformly distributed further for equation 5 to be justifiable we must ensure that the incoming signal does not overload the quantizer. I will talk about overloading and the overload error. I will talk about overloading the quantizer in one of my need. I will talk about overloading in one of my future videos. I will talk about overloading in one of my future. I will talk about overloading in one of my future videos. Coming back to this. Coming back to the probability density function, since it is coming back to the probability density function, since we have stated it to be uniformly distributed, that means that the quantization error has a zero mean and a variance given by sigma q square. So the variance is then We should also note that the variance is equal to that of the mean squared value. So I can now write the variance as expectation on the quantization error square. Now this is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity q square which is a sample of capital Q into the probability density function which is fq of q as per our previous equation. Now let me substitute equation 5 into equation 6 that is expectation of q square is equals to integral now the limits infinite now the limits from minus infinity to plus infinity convert to minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2 followed by q square as it is multiplied by f q of q which is equals to 1 by delta this is what is represented here now since 1 by delta is constant let us take it to the left hand side then integrate the q square which is q cube divided by 3 upon application of the upon the application of the limits and simplifying the upon the application of the limits and simplifying the equation we find the variance of the quantization error to be delta square divided by 12 where delta as we know is the step size of the quantizer now most importantly from equation 7 we note that the previous part so from equation 7 we so from equation 7 we can state the variance of the quantization noise which is sigma q square grows 
grows as the delete the previous part from equation 7 we can note that the variance of the quantization noise increases as the square of the step size this is a very important deduction from this equation right so now we have found the quantization error part of the signal to noise ratio let us now continue to find the variance of the baseband signal so that we can continue to find the signal to noise ratio to find that let us now consider the variance of to find that let us consider the variance of the baseband signal x of t to be represented by sigma x square now when the baseband signal is reconstructed at when the baseband signal is reconstructed at the receiver output we obtain the original signal plus the quantization noise this is quite obvious because the process of quantization creates some error so we can now define the equation for the output signal to noise ratio as snr output is equals to variance of the signal which is sigma x square divided by the variance of the noise which is sigma q square now let us substitute for sigma q square from our previous equation which is delta square by 12 and thus we get the final expression for the signal to noise ratio and thus we get then and thus we get an expression for the output signal to noise ratio and thus we get an expression for the output signal to quantization noise ratio of a PCM system from equation 9 we should note that By analyzing equation 9, we can very easily understand. By analyzing equation further, by analyzing equation 9, further by analyzing equation 9, we make a note that to make the value of SNR large, we have to make the value of the delta, which is the step size, smaller. On the other hand, if you want to decrease the SNR, the previous part from equation 9 we can make from equation 9 we can by analyzing equation 9 we can state that the signal to noise ratio of the PCM system delete the previous part from analyzing equation 9 we can state that the output signal to noise ratio of the PCM system can be increased by decreasing the value of the step size This once again is a very important deduction from the signal to noise ratio derivation. Right. With that, we come to the end of this discussion on the signal to with that we come to the end of this discussion on quantization noise and signal to noise ratio of a PCM system. In my next video, I will be deriving signal to quantization noise re in my next video, I will be deriving expressions for output signal to quantization noise ratio for both mid riser and mid thread quantizers. I hope you liked this video. If you did, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.